Soul family, happy Sunday to you. Hope you are doing well. This is the first upload of the series that I was sharing with you on my last upload. I think it was on uh, Saturday. Um, in regards to September, every week I was going to be posting in regards to um, my downloads from Holy Spirit. Um, I do um, celebrate the Hebrew calendar New Year which will be uh, right around the time of Rosh Hashanah, I think October 2nd through the 4th. Last year was in September. And during this time, um, th that takes me on into my sabbatical time. And that is a time where I um, really dig into um, my meditation practice, um, where I really dig into getting in touch with nature, um, sitting with Holy Spirit, communing with Holy Spirit. Um, it is also a time of, um, I do intermittent fasting anyway, but I typically amp it up during my sabbatical time. It is a time of renewal and recharge for me. So I wanted to make sure that every week uh, in the month of September, I'm not sure about the fifth week. There are five weeks, but it's only like that Sunday and Monday. So I'll see as I get closer down to that time. If I've covered everything that I need to cover, I won't uh, do a video that last uh, week in September, which I think is the 30th, which is a Monday. Okay, but we're gonna go ahead and get started with this very first um, teaching. Um, we're going to be talking about something Holy Spirit shared with me um, in regards to the coming year. Um, I typically talk about this around this time every year, if you've watched me for any length of time, um, talk about the Hebrew calendar and the Gregorian calendar. Some people don't follow the, the Gregorian calendar, which is January to December. They do the Hebrew calendar or the Ethiopian calendar. No matter which calendar you follow uh, for um, your spiritual journey, um, all of it can be applied um, in the, the teaching that I'm sharing with you. Holy Spirit is certainly universal, universal, and, and um, contrary to popular opinion, it is not attached to a religion because Jesus did not create Christianity. You hear me say that quite often simply because it's the truth. <laughs> so um, in the book of, <clears throat> and I do have my tea this morning, let me drink some. In the book of Numbers, uh, verses 1 through 11, that is what I'm going to be covering during this September series of teachings, okay? The book of Numbers, verses 20, I mean, chapter 27, verses 1 through 11. I'm going to be talking about the daughters of Zelophehad, all right? Um, if you are a Bible reader, one thing I want to encourage you to do is, is really research um, so that you can get a contextual understanding of the scriptures. The Bible is not just literal, okay? Um, the Bible is not um, put together in chronological order. Um, <clears throat> the Bible was not written, um, it was written for a purpose, it was put together for a purpose. The original writings were not in a form, okay? Why am I mentioning that? It is because when the Bible is used as a weapon, all right, and I want you to hear me well, when people use the Bible as a weapon, like this is the English version is the only version, you're always gonna run into problems because you typically are uh, quoting out of context. Context is so very important when you are reading the Bible and even your understanding of the Bible, any sacred text for that matter, context is important. Who is the author? Where are they? Who are they talking to? Um, what are what's going on at the time? Um, and what in what time is it set in? What is what is the uh, dynamics of the time? What is the dynamics of the situation that is going on? What is being addressed? All right. And so it is important that we understand that because uh, what we know as the Bible, what we have as a Bible has been translated many times over. So I'm going to encourage you to to do research and cross reference your scriptures with original text, with original Hebrew text, 
um, you can use a concordance. Um, for instance, Matthew Strong's concordance will give you original text. Um, when you look up the, the scripture and it gives you those group of numbers, if you, I'm just going to throw a group of numbers out there, 4481, and it'll give you what that clause is referring to or that word is referring to. This is how you get contextual understanding of the scripture. Uh, the Bible is a historical book. Now, some do, don't want to admit that, but it is a historical book. It has historical accounts but it can be applied to today. That is what you want to do. As you're moving into more Christ awakeness or Christ consciousness, becoming more Christ aware, you want to have contextual understanding of the things that you read. So we're going to go to Numbers um, chapter 27, the daughters of Zelophehad, uh, they had to petition Moses because their father died, all right? And he didn't have any sons. Okay, and any one of you, anybody that knows Bible history understands the girls were property. <laughs> they didn't get property. That was a patriarchy rule at the time. All right. And just a side note, uh, a part of the patriarchy that have been passed on through generational generation after generation that is being dismantled even now. All right. That patriarchal bondage. It is a bondage um, that takes away freedom, that treats individuals as property. All right. There's a breakdown and a shattering of that right now uh, during this very volatile time. Okay. So he didn't have, Zelophehad did not have any sons. So the daughters of Zelophehad had to petition Moses uh, to be able to get their father's land, the father's property. All right. Um, it, in, in truth, they were his offspring. Uh, they were in divine birthright. They were, they were not just strangers. They came through his bloodline, but they were women. Okay, they were women. Okay, and, and so even in this time where you see this Esther generation of women rising, it is because we are accepting and understanding that we were always chosen in the divine birthright, even though a lot of texts do not include us or they minimally include us. OK, um, it, I'm, I'm referring mostly to the biblical texts. Now, there are women throughout the scripture, but you don't hear them talked about as much as you do the male uh, encounters or the male experience. OK, the patriarchal experience. All right. And, and so the one thing that Holy Spirit shared with me uh, during my time of study and during my time of just gathering the information needed uh, for this uh, t teaching series is that we're moving into a time of divine birthright. What does that mean? What what does that mean? Um, I want you to read. Uh, numbers 27, 1 through 11. I won't read it all. I am going to read uh, out of my message Bible, verses 5 through 7. This is after Moses brought their case to God. This is what uh, God gave. This is the answer God gave Moses. Zelophehad's daughters are right. Give them land as an inheritance among their father's relatives give them their father's inheritance. So when Moses went to God on behalf of the daughters of Zelophehad, God ruled in their favor. They were, they had spoken rightly. Okay. They were supposed to receive. They were not supposed to be skipped over. I want you to hear me well. I want you to hear me well for those of you that have been skipped over in times past. You're coming into a time where you're not going to be skipped over. You're right in line to receive inheritance. What is divine birthright? When you look up the word birthright, all right, these are some of the things that, that, that you see. Inheritance or double portion of the father's property, becoming a leader in the family, um, succeeding to the throne if your father is a king or judicial authority. 
all right? So I've broken those things down in this series. And today I'm just going to talk about inheriting a double portion of your father's property. This is what these scriptures are talking about. Inheriting the double portion, making sure that I'm in the place that so so spiritually because of my divine birthright and my connection with Holy Spirit, my connection uh, uh, with uh, Christ awareness. All right. My awareness that Holy Spirit is not on the outside of me, but is on the inside of me. OK, um, my consciousness, uh, my awakeness of the fact that I am in the number of those that should receive. Why are you in that number? It is because your spiritual divine birthright, all right? You have a spiritual birthright, all right? When you come in communion with Holy Spirit and you begin to come into divine alignment of Christ's principles, all right, you hear me say this a lot. Christ is not Yeshua's last name. Yeshua is his name. Jesus is his English name. Okay. Jesus is English. <laughs> okay. So so because we've come in contact with Holy Spirit, what does that mean? Uh, because when we study the scripture, uh, the accounts of Yeshua, all right, they're small. OK, the New Testament, even though he is spoken about throughout the Old Testament, when you read the New Testament, there is not a whole lot in there in regards to um, his life. OK, it's kind of piecemeal. That's why you should always do research. <laughs> I'll throw that in there. Do 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 research so you can gather as much information as possible. OK, and, and so when you're aligning yourself with those principles, those Christ, Christ meaning the anointed one, those principles, all right? Um, those uh, lessons, okay? Those things that you can readily apply, such as love your neighbor as you love yourself. So simple, but many miss it. Even in a political time, you see a lot of anger. You see a lot of hate. Uh, you see a lot of discrimination. You see a lot of division. All right. We can still be a light of Christ's awakeness even during this time. It is our job. I, I believe that to be so. As disciples of a Christ word, to be a light. All right. To be a light. Okay. And as we are entering into this place of divine birthright, there are benefits, all right? In the natural, when your father passes on, um, a good father makes sure that they leave an inheritance for their children, all right? They make sure of that. And so most children, a lot of children, some don't, but a lot of them do. Um, I re recall when my uh, son's father passed. He took care of his uh, arrangements and all anything that uh, needed to be handled. Not only did he take care of that, but my sons received an inheritance from his passing. Okay. Not only did they receive an inheritance from his passing, but there was also benefits they received while he was alive just because he bore, he, he's their father, all right? They're his offspring. And it continues, even two years after he's, his passing, they're still receiving because he prepared for it. Well, you, we got to look at this from the spiritual and from the natural sense, okay? Spiritually, we've been taken care of. We are already in an abundant state. It's just that we have to align to that abundance. We are moving into a time where there will be a double portion of that inheritance, where we will see with our physical eyes, tangibly we're going to see it. And what is inheritance? Inheritance is not just physical things. It is also the positions that you're in. It's not just money or things 
or land or, or property. It is also in every area of your life, the inheritance of the double portion. I want you to understand that the double portion means something. You don't just get a portion, but it's double of that portion because we are in divine alignment, all right, with a Christed work, okay, with a Christed work. It is important also to note um, that as you come into divine, some would ask, well, how do you come into a divine alignment? By applying Christ's principles. Why do I say applying Christ's principles? Because the average individual that even studies the Bible, they are quoting most of what the apostles are saying, namely Paul, because he is the writer of close to over half of the New Testament. They're Pauline disciples. They're not Christ disciples. And so they take the words of Paul over the words of Christ. I know that sounds strange, but it happens. When you hear the Bible being weaponized, it is typically from a scripture that is written by one of the apostles. And a lot of it comes from uh, the apostle Paul's writing. What we need to realize is that all of the writers had their own experience had their own dynamic at the time. And we need to understand so we can get contextual understanding. We need to understand what was going on. That's why I said it at the beginning of the video. Make sure you're doing ample and proper research. All right. Um, we're finding that a lot of people are no longer... Um, they're no longer of the notion that just when somebody quotes a scripture, when they say a word, that's just it. They know they need to go back and study because there's so many people that are deconstructing from religion. And, and that is actually okay because Yeshua never came to create a religion. You all did not. He actually was constantly battling with the religious leaders because they were constantly trying to hang him up. He came with a message of grace, compassion, unconditional love, and a kingdom for all, where everybody was included, okay? Where everybody was included. So because there were two messages, there was a religious legalist message, and there was a grace message, they were constantly bumping heads with Yeshua, okay? And so that's what I'm going to end on this week. I want you to, to understand that this is a time of double portion inheritance because you've aligned yourself, your spiritual birthright of a Christ work, all right, of a Christ work is already in motion. You're being set up for that. You're being set up for that. You're being strategically placed in certain places, in certain areas to do that work. All right. In every area, it's in relationships, it's in friendships, it's in your work, your business, every your 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 ministries, wh wherever you exist, this is that time. And it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time for me. It's an exciting time for you <clears throat> because this is what we've been waiting and preparing for this era of operating from a space of not only divine positioning, but divine birthright. Okay, so family, I love you. I want you to love yourself more than me. And I'll see you on the next download. Toodles.